starting to stream. So I'm just checking. You're on. Where? Am I on Facebook page? Okay, that should be coming on Facebook. All right, great. Uh, bear with me one moment, everybody, while I get this set up. All right, great. So I'm uh, broadcasting this live on my YouTube channel and Facebook page. Um, I got a bunch of questions beforehand, so I'm going to answer those. But if you have any questions while I'm working, feel free to put them in the comments section, and I'll try to get to them um, as quickly as I can. So uh, this is a live drawing session that I used to do every week but the last one was back in April. So it's been a real long time and uh, apologize for that. Um, the summer just got crazy, crazy busy. Um, and I'm, I'm also, I should be streaming live on Instagram too, uh, but I'm not able to see your comments. So I'll try to get back to them when we're finished. Sorry about that. So uh, my name is Brian Allen. I'm a freelance illustrator with flylanddesigns.com. And uh, I was hired to create the concept artwork for Gritty, um, the new Flyers mascot that you've probably heard a little bit about. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit today about, about that experience and add or answer some of your questions. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to be drawing a, uh, a new illustration I made of Gritty. Um, that I wanted to sell on on prints when I when I go to conventions and things because a bunch of people were asking about that um, so Let's get started um, And before I get to the questions, let me just show you what I kind of worked on so far um, I'm using clip studio paint also known as manga studio 5 and it's a really great graphics program it's like Photoshop uh, but uh, has a really great brush engine. Um, so what we've got here as you can see is my first really really rough um, really rough like thumbnail uh, stick figure drawing here where I just kind of put all the shapes together to get the pose and the proportion right and after that I draw on top of that with a little more detail but with a digital pencil so that things are more fleshed out but it's still really rough and then on top of that I go in and change that pencil artwork to blue lower the opacity and draw over it one more time with my ink pen and uh, and that's this is my favorite part here where I where I really like sharpen things up and add style and detail um, so now what I'm going to do is color this guy. This is my favorite part here. Right? And uh, beforehand, what I'll do is I block in all of the colors ahead of time. Um, this will allow me to make like really quick selections. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I get started here. Um, but let's go. So let's see. So the first question uh, I wanted to get to... Um, Hey Roberto, what's up? Hey Joe, thanks for watching. Um, let's see. So, 
one question I got from uh, a ton of people was how did I get this gig? Or some other people have phrased it as uh, let me do a little Marco Rubio there. Um, a lot of people have phrased it as like how did you know the Flyers were looking for a mascot? Um, or did I submit mascots to them? And uh, the answer is that they found me. Um, and they found me, I think, because my, my wife and I put a lot of work into making sure that we get found. Uh, we spend a lot of time putting our artwork out there uh, on social media and our website, in news releases, in anything we can um, so that when opportunities like this come about, uh, they find us. So the Flyers reached out to me because they saw a piece of artwork I did for Chick-fil-A. Um, they had hired me to do uh, work on the uh, a rival restaurant, they called it, where they built a restaurant right on the state line um, for the Auburn and Georgia game. And I had drawn a um, uh, the Bulldog and the Tiger in my style, which was kind of like a, an edgy, cartoony style. And uh, they really liked that because the, at the time they wanted they wanted gritty to be something that appealed to kids but also was still edgy enough to be a hockey mascot you know and and that was something that was a line that we kind of constantly had to to walk because some of my drafts were maybe too too cute and cuddly and then some of my draft or other drafts were maybe too edgy or, or too dark so we constantly went back and forth with that. Um, so thanks for that question. Uh, let's see, we'll get to that. Um, one question that I also get a lot, and this question was submitted by Alexis Russell, uh, is am I happy with how the costume turned out? And um, usually when people ask that, they're implying that maybe I shouldn't be, right? Uh, but me personally, I I really do love it. And I'm not just saying that, of course, because obviously I'm, I'm biased in this situation. But I've designed a lot of mascots before uh, for all kinds of sports teams and businesses, but I've never ever designed one that became like a real life walking, talking mascot. Um, and it's just, it's insane to be able to draw something and then later follow it on Twitter, you know, and, and, uh, and talk back with it and, and stuff like that. So I, I am definitely happy with how the company, uh, which I believe is called Character Translations, how they um, translated the mascot. Uh, I know it can be really challenging because I'm handing them basically just a two-dimensional drawing. Uh, now I tried to put a lot of thought into how it would look in three dimensions, but they have to find a way not only to make it three-dimensional, but also to somehow make it so that this thing doesn't like tip over. I mean any more than it did tip over, I guess. Um, so I, you know, I think they did an excellent job and I, and I, uh, uh, but I appreciate people asking that question for sure. Uh, so just to talk about what I'm doing right now, um, before I really start drawing any details at all, I'll go and make selections on the different uh, different parts of the image and just go over with a really soft brush and uh, and just start to add volume to things. A lot of this will be painted over, but it really helps kind of help me figure out where the light is coming from. <clears throat> All right, let me answer another question. So Matt, my, my friend Matt Timpson, uh, Matt Timpson, who's a very friend or a very awesome artist and friendly guy, um, asking me, did I did I intentionally mean to make gritty haunt his dreams and the answer is yes um, I've been trying 
to get into Matt's dreams for the longest time, and I finally have found a way. So, uh, so next question. Um, uh, Nate Dills asked me, what level of creativity was I given? Uh, like, did they have a fuzzy monster, or could you have a five-legged dog? Um, so, working with the Flyers art directors was really uh, was really great. They definitely gave me a ton of freedom at the beginning, which I really appreciated. They came to me with basically four directions that they wanted to pursue, but they said, you know, we want to also see what ideas you have. Uh, those four directions, um, one of those directions was a monster, kind of like what we ended up with. Uh, the other directions, uh, I can't remember specifically what they were, but from those four directions, uh, I added about 20 of my own, um, or I shouldn't say 20 directions, but we came up with like 25 completely different approaches. So, uh, you know, I was drawing things like, like, uh, like bowls, uh, a bully, um, uh, dragons even, uh, like a Yeti type creature. Um, we went through tons and tons of sketches. And mind you, these were really quick, like 20 minute, really rough thumbnail sketches. And um, I did those uh, like over a couple days, just trying to get as many as I possibly could. Um, and once we did that, then I went and uh, tried to get, um, or they went through the ones that they really liked, gave me feedback, and then I redrew those sketches with more detail. And then we just kept narrowing it down until we arrived at something that was pretty close to what Gritty looks like right now. <clears throat> And bear, bear with me one second. Alicia, did Facebook drop off? Because I don't see it. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Um, so no, and a fi so sorry, Nate. To answer your question, no, a five-legged dog was not something that we explored. Um, so Jennifer Reglin uh, asking me what was the inspiration for Gritty. Um, I think we I mean, to start off. I I looked at I had a huge folder of every single NHL mascot um, in front of me, and I really wanted to make sure that he fit I guess in the universe but at the same time we wanted to do something very very different uh, I, I wanted to make absolutely certain that I did not copy any mascot uh, we needed it to be a completely different creature or animal um, and we needed it to not look too similar to another uh, another mascot uh, for obvious reasons um, so as far as the inspiration I was looking at a lot of uh, like uh, Jim Henson, uh, Sesame Street type monsters because w we knew that, as I said at the beginning, it had to be kid friendly, but it still had to be tough and it had it had to fit uh, a hockey team and not just any hockey team, but but Philadelphia, you know, so. Uh, I guess that was that was a big source of inspiration was like uh, Jim Henson creatures and things. Um, I really love kind of some of the creepier stuff from uh, you know the Dark Crystal, for example, is one of my favorite movies. Oh, and I guess uh, you know I, I'm leaving out that obviously the Philly fanatic is another mascot that's just sort of like a little bit surreal and and uh, bizarre you could say uh, so we wanted to kind of make it look like these guys could be from the same family you know um, or at least the same universe so that was another source of inspiration for sure alright so now that I got like 
Oh, I forgot to color the hockey stick. Um, once I get more of the uh, the colors down, then I'm going to start putting in like some hard outlines and and edges. But let me get to another question. Uh, Greg Stevenson is asking me, is, is Clip Studio Paint the, the program I usually use? Um, I kind of have to use, I juggle a lot of programs. I use Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and Clip Studio Paint. But I would say it's probably like 85% of everything I do. And every project I do, I do part of it in that program because I, I do so much digital painting and drawing and inking. Um, the only times when I can't use it is when I need to, to vectorize artwork. Uh, I'll need to go and use Adobe Illustrator or I'll use Photoshop for graphic design stuff like uh, text sometimes and um, tweaking color and other types of effects. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm, I can't pronounce your name, but Suham Yong, do I use Cin the Cintiq? Yeah, so I'm using the Wacom Cintiq Pro, uh, the 24-inch um, edition. And uh, I already did a review on this on my YouTube channel. I love this thing. It's the best. Um, it, it's the best tablet I've ever used. I don't have anything bad to say about it other than it's crazy expensive. But um, it's it's paid itself, paid for itself. So uh, if you are a um, a professional artist and you need a new tablet, definitely check it out. I love it. And um, so let me get to how do I feel? Uh, Brian Wright is asking me how do I feel about seeing something I made get so much national attention. Um, well, this is definitely the first time I've done anything that has gotten remotely this much attention uh, by far. Um, you know, I, I had mentioned that Chick-fil-A job and that, that was broadcast on a, a national television commercial, which was cool. Um, and it, it showed me drawing, but my face and my name wasn't really publicly attached to that. Uh, nor, nor is this. I mean, you can really only find out that I did this by by googling by googling about it, right? Because um, there were some uh, news articles that interviewed me, which is which is also pretty new. I'm not used to people caring w about what I think, but uh, it like it was overwhelming and uh, humbling and pretty incredible. But obviously, too, a lot of that attention at first, especially, was really negative, right? Uh, it was people freaking out about how he looked or like thinking or not even wanting a mascot in the first place. So to be totally honest, at first, uh, that was very hard to deal with. It was hard to not take it personally, you know, and it was hard to um, figure out what my next move should be, right? So that first day when I woke up and it it was just it was everywhere uh, it was uh, unreal it was like nothing I had ever experienced before definitely um, but in just a few days I felt it start to like turn around and people were starting to send me fan art of gritty uh, they were sending me um, one lady I'll have to share this uh, she does Etch-a-Sketch paintings and she sent me an Etch-a-Sketch drawing of Gritty, which was amazing. Um, and then now you're seeing people getting tattoos and things. Uh, so it, it really, it's starting to feel really great. And I, I did receive some pretty angry comments, you know, which is to be expected. But overall, like it, it was really like 90% positive you know or I would get private messages from people saying that they were a fan and um, uh, you know so I don't I don't know I hope I hope that answers your question it, it was crazy uh, it still is kind of crazy um, but 
it's just it's really humbling too to know that now I'm part of something that may be around for uh, you know I hope a generation or more so so we'll see we'll see where it goes um, so I'll get I'll get back to the questions in a second but now what I'm going to try to do is go through with the lasso tool and a soft brush and just kind of make some um, make some cuts here of the highlights. I like to kind of put the highlights in before the shadows sometimes because when I do the shadows I'm gonna my style is kind of like using an ink pen and uh, doing this first kind of saves me a lot of time because it sort of guides where I need to, to put those strokes. You'll, you'll see what I mean. <clears throat> Uh, so let me answer this question by Dave Clayton. Um, when I get to the vectorizing part, what do you use to clean up all the thousands of points created from that process? So I don't, most of my work does not need to be vectorized. Uh, I do a lot of work for uh, t-shirts and um, uh, posters and things like website things, things that don't need uh, vector process. Um, even some of the things I do for vinyl, like vinyl wraps that are huge, uh, you actually, I don't need to vectorize them because if you work large enough, there's usually no problem at uh, making them bigger. But the time that I do need to work in vector is when maybe I'm doing a logo design or some kind of uh, silkscreen uh, mascot or something like that. Um, when that's the case, I use a program called Vector Magic, and uh, it's a little expensive. It's t it's two hundred bucks, but it's just a one-time fee, and it works a lot like Adobe Illustrator's Live Trace or Image Trace, um, but it works a lot better. So it will it will trace uh, my line art. I can draw my line art here in Clip Studio Paint and then trace it with Vector Magic and it looks almost identical. Whereas if I tried to do that in Adobe Illustrator, it, it really dumbs the line art down and takes out a lot of the style. And, and that program also does a great job of not making a million million little points and stuff. So, so to answer your question, I don't really need to clean it up even when I do work in Vector. Um, and uh, and I should say that really only works for um, for the line art. So what I do is I will just draw it in Clip Studio Paint, trace it, bring it over to Adobe Illustrator, and then I color it there. Um, because trying to color it in this program and trace it to a vector is really uh, it, it's not as accurate. So uh, good question. <clears throat> Um, so I just this is a question from gaming gecko I just joined did you design it for the flyers so what is gritty supposed to be man do I get that question a lot so um, it's a great question uh, yeah I did design it for the flyers they they hired me to uh, to be the concept artist for this so I drew what's called a turnaround um, and that's an illustration of Gritty from the front, side, and back so that the costume company could take that and then interpret it and build the costume uh, from it. And, and at the beginning, as I said earlier, like we also, part of being a concept artist is drawing or experimenting with many, 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 many different ideas at the beginning so you see what sticks and what doesn't. Um, I wish I could share those with you, but I cannot. Uh, they are top secret, um, but maybe someday. Uh, so what is gritty, right? Um, I guess if anybody should know, it should be me. We never, uh, we never specified him being anything or being like a species of anything. Um, he's just a creature. He's just a monster. Uh, similar to the to the way a fanat the Philly fanatic is a creature 
a bizarre creature. Um, we, I guess we wanted him, but we didn't want him to be as abstract as the Philly fanatic. We wanted him to also have a few more human characteristics because we thought that would emote better. You could get more reactions from him and uh, um, animate him better and uh, have him doing things um, that humans do. So, so yeah. So what is gritty? Uh, gritty is all of us. How about that? That's pretty good stuff. You are gritty. All right. So, great question though. Um, Ro uh, Ro L C asking Clip Studio or AI. Uh, I I do use Adobe Illustrator sometimes, but this is all uh, Clip Studio Paint. Um, Jake Man do asking me, do I read comics or Jake Man? Do you read comics and which ones do you like? Um, I used to as a kid all the time. Uh, I grew up on Spawn and Spider Man. Uh, I I've read graphic novels in the more recent past, but no, I don't. I haven't kept up with comic books for a long time. Um, I would love to try to get back into them. I'm trying to get my kid into them actually. But uh, thanks for asking. If you have any recommendations on something I should check out, just uh, let me know. Because that's the hard part. I go into a comic shop and there's just a thousand things to choose from and you pick up a book and you have no idea what's going on. All right. Great questions. Um, hey, this is a great question from Gaming Gecko. Uh, did you have any other names other than Gritty? So I did not come up with the name Gritty. Um, I During the concept phase, I was calling him Benny, uh, but that was never meant to be something permanent. You know, I had just put that on the back of his, uh, of his uniform and, um, or his jersey. And I don't know who came up with Gritty, but I think it's, I think it's great. It was one of the art directors. Um, and what, what's cool about it is that we didn't know his name was Gritty until the costume was really almost finished. So the illustration I made of Gritty sort of probably influenced his name. You know, you look at it and you go, that dude is Gritty, right? I mean, uh, so I think it fits perfectly and uh, I'm really happy with, with that decision. Uh, so I want to say really quick, um, if I hadn't before, um, in Clip Studio Paint, I'm, most of the brushes I'm using are brushes I created. You can, uh, you can buy them from my website at flylanddesigns.com in my shop. Um, they are, they're cool, I think, but I also use brushes from uh, Frendon. He also has a popular brush set and then just the brushes that come with the program are great as well. I'm going to be going to a Flyers game uh, sometime in October and I'm hoping I can I can meet Gritty. It would be cool to get a photo with him for sure um, with my family. And then maybe when I'm there I can get uh, find one of these tattoo artists and get a Gritty tattoo maybe on the house. We'll see. Um, Mojo is asking for a beginner digital artist which one is better, Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint? So if if you look at my YouTube channel, I have a million reviews on Clip Studio Paint, and so it's no secret that I am in love with this program. I think uh, for a beginner, you should definitely start with Clip Studio Paint for a couple reasons. One, it's way cheaper. Uh, it's only 50 bucks, and they often have sales where it's even cheaper. And um, you only have to pay that once. It's not a subscription fee. 
if you are a beginner and you need to pick up Photoshop, then you're going to end up spending ten dollars a month for forever. Um, now I have Photoshop and I use it all the time and I love it too. But if you're not even really sure if digital art is your thing, it's definitely a great program to start with. And the other reason I would recommend it is that it, to me, is a lot more intuitive. Uh, you know the brushes that it comes with mimic real tools um, so I've talked with a lot of people a lot of traditional artists who have resisted digital art for a long time and they they picked up clip studio paint like really quickly uh, because you don't really have to know a lot about digital art to make it work so I would start there <clears throat> And both of them, both programs have a free trial, you know, so you can you can try both. Um, I will say that you you definitely need to know Photoshop too, because if, if all professional digital artists, it's impossible to get by without knowing how to use Photoshop. Period. So. <clears throat> I also love uh, this was not my idea, but the uh, the googly eyes uh, are one of my favorite things on gritty. And so now every time I draw gritty, I got to make his eyes kind of looking in opposite directions, which is uh, not what I had planned. So that was a really nice surprise. I should say that too about the whole process. Um, the the interesting thing about working on projects like this where you're part of a team is that I didn't really even see I didn't see the costume itself um, until pretty late in the whole process because they were all working on it so every once in a while I would just get like a, a photo sent to me of Gritty's head you know or Gritty's torso um, so I would never see it all together until very close to the uh, to the release date uh, so that was really exciting to kind of see it slowly being built and come to life and even the costume itself went through lots of iterations once we were done with the drawing gaming gecko has got all the good questions asking me if I've ever put on the suit I think I'm not a big dude. I think I would get lost in that suit. I could probably fit in the head of Gritty, maybe standing on someone's shoulders. Um, but no, I've never been in that suit. Um, maybe uh, maybe someday I'll get the chance. I can't imagine it smells very good in that suit. see some great questions I probably missed a couple here let me go back sorry I'm trying to keep up um, hey thanks so this guy Hugo asking me from Brazil uh, I appreciate the compliment man um, and you're asking me where do I look for references when sketching ideas for a gig um, I usually, for every job, uh, I usually spend at least an hour just gathering references and inspiration. And I always put together a folder for the job with all these photos because it really helps me come up with approaches that I never would have thought of um, and different details that I just never would have thought of adding at all. So. I always just start on Google image search really uh, and you just you kinda get creative on what you need to type in um, to find the results that you want I also look for inspiration from other artists on like Instagram and uh, Behance is another one that's pretty good um, so I always check there as well and as I said for this one um, I started by basically finding reference to all the NHL mascots out there because I wanted to really make sure that to see how they were built 
see what ideas had already been covered, you know, um, so that we don't copy anything. <laughs> I'll get I'll get back to that question. Um, so uh, yeah, Robert Robert Orozco, uh, who Ro Roberto uh, is a great artist himself. He has a awesome podcast called uh, Shut Up Berto. You should check out. It's really funny. Um, he's asking me. Well, first of all, thanks for the compliments, dude. Uh, so you birthed Gritty. Does that mean he calls you daddy? So I uh, uh, so I was a part of a big team. You know, I, w I was the guy who drew the concept art, but then you have the art directors who worked on it um, and gave me direction. And then you've got the, most importantly, the, co the costume company. Uh, character translations who made it into a real thing so um, maybe I'm maybe I'm one of his daddies like uh, you know what was that movie uh, three men and a baby maybe it's like one of those situations I don't know um, but if he if he were to call if he were I don't know yeah he can call me daddy you can call me daddy I, I don't care that works. All right, so I skipped a bunch of questions. Sorry, if I skipped your question, please feel free to ask it again because the feed is moving really fast. Um, here's an art question. Is it bad that you prefer, or Damaged Souls is asking, is it bad that you prefer to do your line work in Illustrator and then color it in Photoshop? Um, you find it tricky pulling nice lines in Photoshop for some reason. So first of all, it's not bad. Uh, the finished result is really the only thing that matters, um, period. So, but I'm just like you. I cannot, I cannot do line art well in Photoshop. I know some people who can, but I just have never been able to do it. So that's why I use Clip Studio Paint because I find that their brushes, uh, especially for inking, are just way better so so maybe give that a try I don't know if you haven't already um, but if Illustrator is working for you just keep doing it uh, the only reason I don't like inking in Illustrator is I find that uh, because Illustrator is like softening and smoothing your lines which can actually be helpful of course in some situations it, it to me it sort of sucks some of the style out of it and I like to ink kind of looser um, with, uh, I don't know, l more attitude, I guess. That's a dumb word, but, uh, you know, I think you hopefully know what I mean. Um, but I would give that a try, for sure. All right, great. So thanks for all these questions, guys. Um, Jessica Allen is suggesting, have I ever used something called pure ref to make reference collages? Uh, no, I haven't. And um, I'll definitely check it out. If you know the website link to that, if you could add that in a comment, uh, I definitely want to check it out. Because all I've been doing is just saving images in the finder and just selecting them all and pressing spacebar to see them on the screen. But if what you're describing is is what I'm thinking, that could work really well if it like really condenses them in a way that you can see them all. Because sometimes I'll be looking at like 20 different things at once. All right, cool. So let's get. I got enough highlights and cuts in here. Let's turn. I forgot about this background here. Um, let me. I'm gonna start drawing some of the shadows and and edges now. Let's do this real quick though. Um, great. So uh, Gaming Gecko um, asking me, 
Do you think your children will be afraid like every other kid? Personally, I love the design because in I'm the mascot for my high school, the Franklin Sabres. So, well, it's uh, your your opinion is valuable as another mascot, um, for sure. I uh, my my kids aren't afraid of it, but my kids are probably a little messed up. Uh, I mean, their dad basically makes a living by drawing zombies and stuff. So they they love things like Five Nights at Freddy's is their favorite thing in the world, and they they sleep with stuffed animals of these crazy creepy bears, which I don't I don't really get. So have, they're not scared of it. Um, I've seen videos where Gritty is surrounded by kids and they're all they're all loving it. So, but I, I I know what you're getting at, and I have seen the videos where kids are not loving it. Um, so I, I think I think that'll change just with like a, as Gritty evolves and um, grows his personality, you know. Uh, but but personally, just my experience with my own kids, like kids kids love creepy stuff, you know. Um, I always have, so I think that can uh, can actually be an asset. Uh, great question, though. Uh, so so now what I do now that those soft um, colors are laid down, I'll take an ink brush and I set a layer to multiply. And I use kind of like a, usually a purplish color here. And I'm just going to go over it and add the midtones to the drawing. And I'm making selections so that right now only the, uh, the jersey is selected. So I don't, I don't really have to worry about staying in the lines, which is one of the reasons that I block in the colors ahead of time. And uh, if, if anybody's interested, um, just a little plug, when, when I'm done with this, I'm going to be selling this as a signed print um, from my web shop. And that's flylanddesigns.com slash shop. So I'd appreciate it. It really helps support, support the channel and, and everything we do here. Um. <laughs> So Hannah Foel is asking, at what point did the belly button get introduced? Um, so the belly button was not was not me because all the drawings I drew, he had a shirt on. Um, in fact, actually, way early in some of the sketches, uh, Gritty didn't even have shorts. He he just had he was a big furry orange belly all the way down under his shirt. So uh, uh, it, that was a really good decision by the art directors to add shorts, I think. Um, I think as they discovered that his legs would have to be longer, that that became necessary. So as, as far as the belly button, I have no idea. I actually haven't seen the belly button. Um, it sounds like you've gotten pretty close to Gritty. So I haven't had that privilege yet. Uh, Gaming Gecko asking, have you done any other mascots? Um, I've done lots and lots of like two-dimensional mascots uh, for companies and brands um, and sports teams and stuff like that. But this is the first time I've done a mascot, or like I, I've even done the mascot for my kids' uh, elementary school here. This is the first time I've done a mascot that became a real walking thing. Uh, walking, talking, tweeting monster. Um, so that was a new experience. And the, the only thing I really had, the only thing that made this job different was that I really had to be cognizant of how it was going to look in three dimensions. Uh, you know, and, and so that, that's why uh, part of why Gritty is kept to be kind of simple. Um, there were times in the early sketches where he had like like wings for example we tried out uh, we tried out like a tail um, his mouth used to be more complex like he used to have teeth and it just it, those things got knocked away as we realized that they had to be simpler to make the costume work and more importantly 
to make him visible from anywhere in the stadium. You know, you need to make him kind of similar to when you're designing a cartoon character. You want to make him a good silhouette. You want to make him uh, rec his features recognizable. Oh, hey, uh, Matt Woodworth. Um, Matt also does great art, by the way. Uh, is asking a really great question, and I, I accidentally I skipped this question from another person. Um, basically, about the rate. Uh, how do you negotiate a contract like this when the client is so big and uh, when it it does seem like a big opportunity? Um, the The answer is that I'm always struggling to figure this out myself. Uh, I've been doing this professionally since, or independently I mean, since 2012 and I've been a professional artist since 2004 and I still haven't figured it out. But we are, uh, my wife and I are have been lucky to be pretty successful at it so I know, I let's say this, I know that we are not undercharging uh, because we've been able to make a pretty good living um, and I know that we are not overcharging because we seem to get enough work to always have work right and and I, I think that's kind of the line you always want to walk you know if you're in a if you're a freelancer and you're in a position where you have so much work you can barely have time to even do it or do a good job it probably means you're not charging enough Right, so you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to adjust that a bit. Um, and then, of course, the opposite is true. If you if you're not finding any work, nobody will accept your prices. Then you're probably charging too much. With a project like this, because uh, I most of what I do is for small businesses um, around the world, and uh, you know, small to medium size, and. About two to three times a year, I'll get a big job like this, um, where it's from. Uh, probably the last one before this was for Hulk Hogan, um, and you you know going in that you're working with a really big property, and the opportunity is going to be bigger. So you need to handle your quote differently than you would with just like a local business, of course. So the first step, I usually um, I reach out to a network I have of kind of mentors um, who have worked in the industry a long time, and they know they recommend what to charge. So that's the first thing I did here. You know, I, I sent emails and I got a lot of great feedback. Um, the The problem with a job like this, uh, gritty is obviously going to become an enormous property um, if he, he probably already is right so it's almost like no amount is enough right so you you have to I tried to balance um, especially when I first quoted how much I was willing to lose this job like was I willing to risk losing this job and I did not want to lose it because I knew that it would be good exposure it would be good experience and um, I factored that in to my price uh, I was real happy with what I got and I believe they were too so uh, there you have it um, and I wish I could give you specific answers because I, I know that would help a lot more um, one place you can find specific answers there are uh, there's the Association of Illustrators which has some recommendations on what to charge but in my experience um, in some categories they've been totally off base because I don't think they've up off base as in too high because I think they haven't really updated their uh, pricing lists since um, maybe the 90s I, I think I don't think they're factoring in the fact that you're competing with the entire world now uh, but that's my opinion. Um, I hope I answered that question well enough, but that was a bit rambly. Um, Juan Carlos, uh, no, Clip Studio Paint is not a vector program. 
Um, as I was saying earlier, I do uh, a ton of my work as raster stuff, and then if I really, really need to make it a vector, I, I use a program called Vector Magic to trace it. Thanks for all these questions, guys. I appreciate it. Um, I'm probably only going to be drawing maybe for another 10 minutes because my kids are going to get home any second, and that's going to change the dynamic around here. But uh, if so, if there are any questions that I skipped, please let me know now, um, and I will try to get to them. If if I don't get to your question during the video, feel free to add it as a comment, and I will try to get back and answer it. So let me see here. I know there was a good one I missed. Let's see. All right, great. So um, I have probably another half an hour to go into this drawing, but I'm just gonna keep following the same process where I'm gonna add more shadows, and then add, when I'm done with that, add a few highlights with this ink brush. And then on top of that, I'll add a couple effects. Um, as I said, if you're interested, I'm gonna be selling this as a print from my uh, web shop on flylanddesigns.com. And I just want to say real quick that, you know, thank you to the flyers for hiring me to do this. Um, it's humbling and, and an honor to be involved. Um, and uh, I also appreciate all the messages I've been getting about Gritty and all the support. So uh, keep it coming. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I've got a bunch of other YouTube videos on uh, Clip Studio Paint and my process. So go ahead and uh, subscribe if you want to see more of that. Uh, otherwise, thanks so much for watching. See ya.